A little while ago I was playing with this thing, which is a Sony PCM-F1 digital audio processor. And uh, just in case you're not familiar with these things, all they do is they take an analog audio input, uh, they convert that into a PCM uh, signal, which they then output in the form of a video picture, which you can then record on a video tape recorder. Typically it would have been one of these, a little uh, Sony Betamax uh, SLF1. This particular one doesn't work unfortunately, but uh, you can use the F1 with any type of video recorder. Um, I was using it with VHS machines and it was working absolutely fine. So what comes out of this is just a video signal. Um, you can obviously record that onto a tape, which is what you're meant to do, but you can do anything else you like with that video signal. It's just a standard video signal. Now, another thing that was fairly common in the 80s and 90s were these things. These were commonly known as video senders. Now, basically all these do is they take um, an audio and video signal, typically stereo audio and video, transmit it over radio to the receiver device, which then outputs the audio and video at the other end. The idea being you could have the receiver in your bedroom or whatever. You connect the transmitter to your... I don't know, satellite receiver or DVD player or whatever in the living room, and you could watch the output through the radio link on the television in the bedroom. Typically these things were pretty poor quality as I remember. Um, these are just a couple I've picked up on eBay for next to nothing. These annoyingly have these four pole jack connectors um, for the AV in and out. There was another type, um, which I have some of, which are just built into these sort of oversized SCART connectors, so they'd hang out the back of the equipment. These ones are more convenient, um, albeit I would prefer... I think you could get some that had ordinary phono connectors on them, but uh, not a big deal because I've got a couple of these little cables which just go from the four pole jack plug and they give me three phono connectors. Now, I'm sure you've guessed where this is leading by now. What if, instead of sending a video signal through these things, we send the output of the PCM F1 through them? So PCM digital audio via the radio link provided by these little video sender devices. Now as I say, my recollection of these things is that the picture quality is pretty poor. I've just inserted this little clip just to give you an idea of what a normal video picture looks like when sent through the video sender system. So at the moment you're watching the clip directly from the camcorder, so this is not through the video sender. And now this is the exact same clip again, but this time captured through the video sender. So the output from the video sender receiver is being captured directly on the uh, Canopus capture device. So that's just to, to give you an idea of what the picture looks like. So I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll give it a try anyway. Now, the snag I've got is I only have one of these PCM F1 units, so what I could do is record the output from this on, say, a VHS tape and then play that VHS tape back through the um, video sender. But I'd rather have a clean video signal going straight through the transmitter and receiver. Now, as luck would have it, I've recently found... So i just move these things out of the way for a moment. This thing, which is a Sony digital audio processor PCM601ESD. Now, this is exactly the same as the PCM F1, does the same job. The difference with this one is, in addition to the video um, inputs and outputs, it also has SPDIF inputs and outputs. So you can get a lossless, perfect copy of any SPDIF source, and likewise any PCM F1 video recording. So, what I'm going to try and do is use this as the transmitter, if you like. So I'll connect this one up to the video sender, trans whoops, the video sender transmitter and I'll connect the receiver up to the PCM F1 and we'll see if we can get an audio signal, a PCM audio signal across that way. Now, I've genuinely never plugged this thing in. I don't even know if it's going to work. Shall we give it a try? Let's make sure the power switch is off. And uh, actually I should really check that the plug is wired properly first. I will do that. That looks absolutely fine. Two amp fuse, interesting. That's quite unusual. Worth a check because you never know who's wired these things up. They could have done all sorts of ridiculously, um, horribly dangerous things inside the plug. But anyway, that's fine. So let's plug it in. 
and power up, see if we get any... Tell you what, I'll dim the lights, just so it's easier to see the display if it comes on. Yes! We have display. This is looking promising. Should we try feeding some audio into it? I'm just going to use this um, DVD player just as a source of audio, just to try this out. So, one second, I'll get this hooked up. OK, we're hooked up. So, analog outputs from this DVD player into the analog inputs of the Sony. I've got the input selected as analog, 16-bit resolution. All these off, copy, auto, rec, mute and tracking all switched off. So, if we hit play on here, we should get some audio going into the... Sony. Now, oh yeah, we're getting peak indication, but no indication on the view meters. Now, it could be like the F1 in that it needs a video loop to display on the. Oh, there we go. If we press record mute. Yes, it is the same as the F1. So we need an audio, um, sorry, a video loop between the ins and outs on the back to get the view music display to show up during recording. Typically that would be through a video recorder. That'll do for a test. So, shall we see if it's actually outputting any video? Right, that's the TV hooked up. So let's see if we connect the output from this Sony into the video input of the TV. Yes, we get a picture. Okay, let's feed some audio through it. That's looking pretty good, isn't it? Is it worth just giving that a test with a video recorder just to see if it actually works? I actually just realised I don't need a video recorder, do I? I can just loop the video output back into the video input and this unit handily has a monitor output connector um, which I've connected up to the TV so I can see what's going on. I've also connected up the analog audio outputs from this to the TV so we can hear the, the audio looping through the PCMF1, digitising, undigitising and then back out to the TV. OK, the speakers are going to be pretty poor in this TV but at least it'll demonstrate that it works. Um, so if I hit play on the CD now... We have VU meter indication. Oh, I better not let too much of that play because that'll be a copyright piece of music, so we'll have to mute that. But we are now getting VU indication and the audio is going through the whole system. What I'm going to do now is, at the moment I've got this set up so the analog outputs are going into the analog inputs of the PCM coder. So I'm now going to switch the cabling around at the back so that the SPDIF output from this DVD player is going to the SPDIF input on the audio processor. So I need to flick it to digital and see if we get the same thing happening. should work in exactly the same way except the whole system is completely digital. So let's get that hooked up and we'll give that a try. That was interesting. As soon as I connected the DVD player up to the digital input, I heard a relay click in there and this light's come on and we've lost the output from the monitor out connector. So I wonder if I turn off the DVD player Yes, that's clicked back, that light's gone out, and we've now resumed output on there. So let's try actually playing the disc and see what happens. Ah, it says copy prohibiting, so it must know that that's... It isn't though, that's just a burnt CDR. So it shouldn't prohibit me copying that. Now we've lost input altogether. We've got playback muting lit up on the display now. What is going on? Let's turn that off. And it's happy. Play. copy prohibiting again. Why is it prohibiting me copying that? Oh, of course the level don't level controls don't make any difference do they because it's a digital input. 
If I switch to analog, it works. If I switch to digital, we've now got playback muting, but with the copy prohibiting light has gone out. So let's stop the disc and start the disc again. Now we're just going to do playback muting. Ah, tell you what, I have admittedly used an audio cable for the SPDIF connection. Let's use a proper coaxial digital audio cable for that link and see if that improves matters. No, even with a proper coaxial cable, and I've also swapped the CD for a proper pressed CD as well, um, it's not working. It seems to be happy with the SPDIF signal. It's showing it on the VU meters, but it doesn't seem to want to output it. So, I don't know, am I doing something wrong here? Um, if you're familiar with these machines, please let me know in the comments what I'm doing wrong here, why this isn't working for me. Um, hopefully, this device actually works, um, and I'm just doing something wrong, but it's possible this is faulty, of course. Anyway, it doesn't stop us doing our original intended experiment, which just means we'll have to use the analog link from the CD into this unit. So I think the first thing I'm going to try is just connecting this unit directly to the PCM F1, just via a cable and make sure the F1 can play back the output from this uh, 601. OK, here's the setup. We've got DVD player here acting as an audio source, analog outputs from that going into the analog inputs of the PCM601 ESD. I've then got the video output from the 601 ESD going to the video input of the PCM F1. I've then got the analog audio outputs from the PCM F1 going into the audio inputs of the TV. And I've also connected up the copy out connector from the F1 into the TV just so we can monitor what's going on. So without further ado, let's power everything up. PCM F1 first. And PCM 601 ESD. And DVD player. And let's play the disc. Yeah, that's working. Uh, better, um, I better mute the audio because that's copyright. So that's working. So that's the output of the 601 going straight into the output, uh, the input, sorry, of the F1, and that's decoding absolutely fine. And if I switch it to 14-bit, yeah, just carries on fine. But we'll leave it on 16-bit. So all I need to do now is introduce these little things into the chain. So before I make the connections, I'll power everything off again, just to be safe. Probably won't matter, but we'll do it anyway. OK, exactly the same setup that we just had, except the video output from this encoder is now connected into this video sender transmitter. And the output of this video sender receiver is now connected to the video input of the PCM F1. So it's exactly the same, except we've replaced that cable with a radio link. So let's power everything up. PCMF1 first. PCM601 ESD. Right, now let's turn on the video sender transmitter and the receiver. And we have a signal. Look at that. That's now going over the radio. OK, let's play the audio through. Yeah. Sounds OK. Obviously I can't play much of that because it's copyright. I'm quite impressed that worked actually. I really didn't think those video senders would be up to the job, but it does seem to be working. So, uh, what shall I do next? I think the next thing to do is move the F1 and the receiver unit and its power supply to somewhere remote. It'd be nice if I could run this off a battery, wouldn't it? Oh, but then this would need a battery supply as well. Hmm, can't really do that, can I? I'll just have to move this sort of some distance away. Um, then what I'll do is I'll get some copyright free music which I can let you hear and 
give you a direct recording of the output from the PCMF1 with it going via a radio link. Let's try that. OK, apologies for shaky cam, but this will be a bit difficult to show with the camera on the tripod. I've got the PCMF1 over here on the other side of the room now with the uh, video sender receiver unit connected to it. I've got the audio outputs coming from this going across into my Canopus ADVC55 capture unit. I've also connected the video input to the Canopus to the video output, the copy output I should say, connector from the F1. So what I'll do is I'll play some music from over here where we have the transmitter unit with the PCM601 ESD being fed with the audio output from this DVD player. Um, I'll capture that on here so you should get a reasonably good idea of the quality we're getting through this radio link. So let's start powering things up. Probably makes sense to power up the transmitter side of things first so transmitter DVD coder right let's go over the other side of the room yeah, power on Oh, that's off on the back. And we have the signal coming through. So we'll start capturing on here. There we go. And we'll start the playback on here.